just be gone. Ha ha, yeah! Just be gone. If you don't mind, let us just stand and just let us. We entered into this gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. This is a new year, a brand new year. I want you to just look around, look to your left and look to your right. It's a blessing that we're here because guess what? Somebody didn't see 2023. I don't know about you all. I don't know what you came to do today. I don't know what you plan to do today. But I do know one thing. We're going to lift him up. We're going to worship him in spirit and in truth. We're going to let him have his way. Because to God be the glory. To him be all the glory and honor that's due to him. This is the day that the Lord has made. We're going to rejoice. We're going to be glad in it. The sun is shining. Our hearts are warm and merry. We ought to be just ready to lift up this awesome God of ours. He has brought us into 2023. I don't know about you. I didn't bring myself here. You didn't bring yourself here. But when I think about the people that didn't make it just here recently, got to the threshold of it, didn't cross over, but you and I, we are here today. Woo! Hallelujah! Glory! Hallelujah! Yes, Lord. And I'm just so excited. When we were in Sunday school this morning, we learned that if my people, God's people, not anybody else's people, not the American people, the, the Chinese, the Russian people, but God's people who are called by what? His name. Would humble ourselves. Keep it down. Pray wholeheartedly. Seek his face. Turn from our wicked and evil ways. You know, we can, do, we can do some wicked and evil things now. It was the church, remember, that plotted against the apostle Paul that came against Christ himself. The church now. What does that say to us today? That we've got to get this thing right. We've got to allow this awesome God of ours to produce love, joy, peace, long suffering, temperance, faith, hope, meekness, and all those things within us that comes by aid of the Holy Spirit himself. When we do this, God gets the glory. The devil is put to flight. And the world is kept out of the church with its own innovations. 
but they can come into the church and receive salvation through Jesus our Lord and our Savior because of what he did at Calvary. That's what being a Christian is all about. This is what we're supposed to be doing in 2023. Know your purpose in God and find yourself there. I'm going to give you a minute to get to your responsive reading. It's found in the gospel recorded by St. Matthews, the second chapter, verses 1 through 4. And once you have found it, give a hearty praise the Lord, if you will. And we'll find these words. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended my Lord, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind. Forgetting those things which are behind, our past is behind us. Forget about that old luggage, that old this and that. And reaching forth unto those things which are before. Let us therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded, and if in anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you, my Lord. Now together, nevertheless, whereto we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. Let us mind the same thing. Now if that ain't unity, I don't know what is. We are to mind the same thing. Amazing grace. God's grace is amazing. Yeah. 
Happy New Year, Black Chapel. Happy New Year. It's a good it's a blessing to be back into the house of prayer. It's a blessing to be, be able to come to Sunday school this morning. It's Reverend Thompson saying, but our Sunday school lesson, if my people that are called by my name will turn, will humble themselves and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and heal the land. And that's what God say. And it's a brand, it's a spanking new year. We want God to heal the land. When I got up this morning, I thank God for another day that I got up on that pillow down this morning and said, I'm not going to do no three miles, I'm going to do four miles. And I thank God I was able to do that this morning. But I'm here, I know it's prayer time, but you know, the, the word says, make a joyful noise. A joyful noise. And I get up in the morning, I make a joyful noise, so I'm in the Lord's house. I want to make a joyful noise this morning. When I rose this morning, I didn't have no doubt. I knew that the Lord will bring me out. I fell down on my knees. I cried, Lord, help me, please. Got up, sing, and shout in the victory. Say, victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. I told Satan, be behind victory today is mine I say joy is mine joy is mine joy today is mine I don't say them get deep behind joy today is mine I say happiness is mine. I mean that now. Happiness is mine. Happiness today is mine. I don't say them. Yeah, deep behind. Happiness today is mine. Like I said, when I rose this morning, I didn't have no doubt. I knew that the Lord will bring Michael out. I fell down on my knees. I cried, Lord, help me, please. Get up, sing, and shout in victory. I said, victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. I told Satan, get deep behind. Victory today is mine. Like I said, I said, when I rose this morning, I didn't have no doubt. I knew that the Lord will bring Michael out. I fell down on my knees. I cried, Lord, help me, please. Got up, sing, and shout in victory. I said, victory is mine. 
Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. I told Satan, get thee behind. Victory today is mine. Prayer time. Woo! This morning, this morning, brand new spanking year, I just want to say thank you, Jesus. Lord, you kept us all across last year, Lord. And if we had a thousand tons, it wouldn't be enough. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Because, Lord God, you are holy. Besides you, Lord, there is no other God. Worship and pray you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Because there's no other name where men may be saved. And, Lord, we just want to say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for keeping us all across 2022 20, and bringing us to 2023. 20, Thank you, Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus to look upon the Black's Chapel family. Keep us, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Bless Pastor John, old man, Neil, the keeper of our soul. Bless him and his wife and his family, Lord. Bless the Sunday school, Reverend. Keep your own around, Father, in the name of Jesus. Reverend Cole, Lord. Bless him and his wife and his family, Lord. Bless him and lead the Sunday school the way you want to be led, Lord. And bless the Bible class, Lord. But, Father, we need you. And we just can't get along without you. Because, Lord, you said in your word, my people are dying. My people are dying for the lack of knowledge, Lord. So this year, Lord, we're going to praise you, Lord. This, Lord, we're going to pray, Lord, that you will keep us in the name of Jesus. Because, Lord, you've been so good, you better have been to ourselves, Lord. And, Lord, we can't but praise you. Enough. Praise it goes up and blessings come down. And, Father, we stand up and need a blessing right now, Father, in the name of Jesus. Because there's no other name where men may be saved. Because, Lord, when we speak that name, something's going to happen, Lord. Something's going to happen in the Black Shepherd family. Something's going to happen in Jackson, Mississippi. Something's going to happen in Mississippi. Something's going to happen in the United States of America. Something's going to happen in this world when we speak that name. But every knee must bow. And every tongue must confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord of lords and King of kings to the glory of the Father. And Lord, we just want to thank you, Lord. We pray, Lord, you bless all choice open doors in your name this morning. In the name of Jesus. For that power in the name of Jesus. In the blood of Jesus has power. Thank you, Lord, for your blood. Thank you, Lord, for dying on the cross that we may have life, eternal life, in the name of Jesus. Bless the ministers of God's Lord, preaching your word, Lord. Bless the teachers that teach your word, in the name of Jesus, Lord. We pray you bless all our exilians of the Black Chapel family, in the name of Jesus. And keep us, Lord, in your hands, Father, in the name of Jesus. Bless the choir, going to sing your songs of praise. Bless the worship service, Lord, because praise that goes up and blessings come down. And Father, we stand in need of blessing right now, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray you bless our musicians that's playing your music of praise, Father, in the name of Jesus. But these are all the blessings that we actually daughter, son, in Jesus' name, we pray. In the name of Jesus, 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 we pray. Amen. Amen. Now, this bring our devotion to a close. We asking everybody. Continue to keep praying for the Black Chapel family. Keep praying for Jackson, Mississippi. Even though we're going through a water crisis, but keep praying because it's all in God's hand. All in God.
Come on, put your hands together. y'all glad to be in the service today? Amen? How many of y'all really glad to be in the house of the Lord one more time? Amen? Come on. Come on, y'all. Come on, quiet. Stand on your feet. 
you one more time. Say one more time. Say one more time. One more time. One more time. So glad. ecstatic. I'm just grateful. I'm just glad to be in the service one more time. Do you really, really realize that he didn't have to do it? He did not have to do what he did. And you might say, well, what did he do? He gave you one more day to get it right. He gave you one more year to get it right. One more year, one more day to love the way he has expounded us to love. We bring you greetings in the precious name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus. The one who died, the one who defeated death in hell and the grave out on Mount Calvary. The one that gave you one more chance to enter into his house, to enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. When I woke up this morning and my eyes looked up towards the ceiling, I don't know about you all, but I was in a warm bed, had covers over me in a warm house, heat, air, and everything else that you need. Food. But when I thought about it, somebody didn't have that. Somebody had to brave the coldness, the darkness, the emptiness. But I bet you they were thankful that they were alive to see another day. And some of us, we sit and we act as if God does nothing. Oh, well, I'm just here. Well, well, I'm, it's 2023, so what? Much, much, much what? Because it is he that has given us what we have. To our visitors, we want to greet you in his precious name. We want you to know that wherever you are today, in today's chapter of your life, that this God that we talk about, we sing about, that we know and we profess about, is all who he says he is. He's a faithful God, a just God, a merciful, and a loving God. Whatever you're in need of, he's got it. Well, if you need keeping, he'll keep you. We just greet you in his precious name. 
I know we look around and we see everything that's not right and this, that, and the other, and circumstances dictate this and that to us, but I want you to know that at the end of the day, he is still in charge. He is still in control. He still loves you in spite of you. He still loves me in spite of me. That gives us room. That gives us credit to grow in him. That gives us all the opportunity to explore the purpose that he has in our lives. And if we do that, I guarantee you, if you're at home, wherever you are, on your sick bed of affliction, wherever you are, this God that we serve, that we know, that we talk about, he makes all the difference. We certainly thank God for you. And we may have some visitors in our sanctuary this morning. If you don't mind standing, we want to acknowledge your presence because guess what? You could have been anywhere, but you are here with us. We thank God for you. Those of you that are visiting with us via satellite at home, yes. the internet, we thank God for you as well because this God is, is there with you just as he's here with us. He's an omnipresent God. Do we have any visitors with us inside the sanctuary? If not, looks like everybody is at home. Then guess what? We ought to be ready to lift up the name of our God. Oh, I see a brother in the back back there. Bless your brother. And you don't, if you want to say something, say it. You don't have to, but if you do, be. Amen. We certainly thank God for you because, like I said, you could have been anywhere, but we thank God that you chose to be here with us. And we love you with the love of our God, the love that God gives us. Our motto here is love ye one another. And in spite of what the world may think or you may think or whatever, we still love you because God first loved us. We see in you. Yes, the glory of our King, and we love you. Yes, we do. And we know something is going to be said, something is going to be done, and we just want you to pray with us and for us as we continue to lift up this great God of ours in this new coming year. How many of you all are really, 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 really looking forward to a blessed year in the Lord? Amen. Amen. And he will not let you down by any means. Pray much for us and with us. Our announcements. Happy New Year. What better way to start the new year off first Sunday in the new year at church? Amen. Our announcements are as follows. You're invited to the seventh annual Mississippi Legislator Prayer Breakfast held at First Baptist Church on State Street, January 4th. The breakfast starts at 8. There's a contact number, 601-353-6477. In observance of New Year's, Richard's Disposal will not be picking up garbage on Monday, January 2nd. Services will resume on Thursday, January 5th. Attention educators. Positions are available to work with an after-school program in our area. The positions include mentoring, sports and recreation, arts, financial literacy training, science and engineering, gardening projects, tutorial and other activities. The compensation is $20 per hour for non-certified staff and $30 per hour for certified staff. If you're interested in working the program, meet with Deacon Cross in the prayer room immediately after service. Amen. Also as a reminder, if you have any information as an announcement, uh, please give it to the, send it to the pulpit after the announcements if you don't have it in. 
All right. Also, to stay privy of all the church information, uh, last minute um, information to get out to you, please join the church text group. You can send a text to 81010 and text to at Blacks CHA. That's to stay informed of last minute information of the church. Amen. Our birthdays for the week. Well, do we have? Well, we would. Well, we have all our January birthdays to please stand. Everyone have a birthday in January. If you would please stand, January birthdays. Okay, happy birthday members. And this week, we actually have, on the second, we have Deaconess Phyllis Pendleth McMillan. On the fourth, we have Deacon Ken Jones. On the fifth, we have Deacon Perry Tate and Shirley McFarland. On the sixth, we have Sister Joetta Edwards. And on the seventh, Brother Charles Tate Sr. Happy birthday members. <laughs> And on our prayer list, we have Brother James Ransberg, the demise of his sister, Barbara Ransberg in Kansas City, Missouri. We have Sister Mary Cooper, mother of Dennis Williams, Deacon Charles and Sister Madeline Bell, Tyler Pfizer, the nephew of Mother Wyndham and Deacon Melvin Pfizer, Brother Turner Curry, Joshua Henderson, Sister Jessie Bell Williams, mother of Brother Curtis Watson, and please be in prayer for those that we are unaware of. Amen. Thank you and have a great week. Good morning, Blacks Chapel. Good morning. I'm not really fussing, but I just want to say this. God has blessed us into a new year. Amen. Some of us sitting there like we've been entertained. I see some rocking like this. One or two of you are standing up. We're not entertainers. I know I'm not. I just got a call two days ago. My son is in construction. And he usually just tell people, you know, what, what they're supposed to be doing. And he going to jump into this, whatever this kind of truck it was, that construction place, just driving. He wasn't even supposed to be in it. He just going to see if he can drive it. He was driving it somewhere. And hit the an incline, the truck fell over, the tractor or whatever it was, Amen. fell over on his leg. Do you know I could have been burying him yeah. in the new year? Amen. But me, I pray for all five of my boys every day. Amen. I tell God, I can't be with them. I don't know where they are. But you know, yeah. keep your hands on them. That boy got from under that thing, no scratches, no nothing. And he told me, Mom, I started not to call you because I know you were going to fuss at me. That's what I do. I fuss at him. When he here doing something, he ain't got no business, no business driving this thing. But God showed him. I think he kind of scared him a little bit. So he should know. Parents, let's keep our children in prayer. Every day. I mean, even when you're driving down the street, just think of them. Lord, keep your hands around them. God is so good to me. He's good to me, and he can be good to you. Just talk to him. Amen. We're in the year of what? And some of you just sitting there like, okay, just another Sunday at church. I'm happy. Yeah. And if you don't do it, I'm going to do it. Because I know I could have been without one less son today. 
but God has blessed me. So if you see me jumping, it's okay. I'm going to get your blessing too while you sit down there. Now, I'm not talking about the mothers. I understand. I bumped my knee this morning, and I felt it. It was kind of sore. But you think I care about my knee being bumped? No, because I made it out all right. Come on, poor me, man. God is just so good. Y'all be thankful for him. Let him know you appreciate him watching over you while you walked in here this morning. You walked in here. You drove in here. And I've been just riding down the interstate. Okay, 18 wheel, you stay on your side. Don't come over here. And that's why I be talking to him. Don't come over here. And once I pass the 18 wheel, I just start thanking him. Because he didn't come over and hit me. So y'all, just be thankful for what God has done. I'm not telling you to get up and shout or nothing, but just show him you appreciate what he has done for you. Amen? I ain't talking about paying no million dollars in tithes because I ain't got that. <laughs> you know, I'm just saying, just tell him thank you and let him know you appreciate him for what he's doing. He blessed me this morning to walk in this door without a lump on my leg. And I know I bumped it. But I don't feel it right now because I thank God for it. Amen. Amen. Thanks to God. Keep God on your mind. Keep God on your mind. You know, all the time. Keep God. And I thank God for this choir. You know, I just love this choir. I'm telling y'all right now. You better not do nothing to say nothing about it. Y'all can sit down on them if you want. All right. I'm going to get your blessing. Amen. Amen. All right. Come on, choir. Good morning, Black Chapel. Happy New Year to you. Now this song goes out to the ones that made it out all right. All of us made it out all right. All of us are in here today. Y'all join us today now. Thank you. You didn't let the enemy take me. 
to make an appeal to you all and this is not for the church Amen. this is for your own benefit Amen. and the appeal that I'm going to make is for you all to try God try tithes Amen. try tithing Amen. and I'm making this appeal to you all because I've been doing it I guess 20 something years I don't know how, how long but I know that God has always made a way for me. You know, since I started, there have been times where I've been unemployed. I've been underemployed. But he's always made a way. And again, this morning, I just want to encourage each and every one of you all. Just try God for yourself. Try tithing. And just see what God does. Try tithing and watch God work. The choir just say, I made it out all right. Like I say, I can witness, I know that if you do what God asks, you're going to make it out all right. 
So I just want to give you all that word of encouragement this morning as we start the new year. Uh, it's no better time to start trying it than right now. Right now. Try God right now. Uh, here at Black Chapel, we have multiple ways to give. You can give online through Givelify. You can come by and drop off in the drop box on the west end of the church uh, at any time, or you can give right here in service. So at this time, we're going to turn everything over to our ushers. Ushers, you're in charge. stand please let us pray Heavenly Father God we thank you for this offering that was just taken we know that you love a cheerful giver and you said give and it shall be given unto you pressed down shaken together shall men give into their bosoms Father we just thank you that those that have given they gave with a cheerful heart Father we know that you're going to just multiply this blessing Father and we know beyond a shadow of a doubt 
that those that gave that even had a desire to give but had not the funds this time but on the next time they will be able to give and they will give with a cheerful heart but we thank you father we just pray in the precious name of jesus and father those that are on our sick and our shut-in list we pray for them father at this hour and at this time those that are bereaving at this time father we pray that your peace would be upon them lord god a peace that surpasses all understanding those that are incarcerated physically, spiritually, and mentally, we lift them up as well, Father, because we know that you are the bomb in Gilead. Yes. We know, Father, that you are the peace that gives all peace to everyone, Father. And we yes. thank you this day. In the precious name of Jesus, in this new year, we lift up your name and we thank you. In the precious name of Jesus, amen and amen. All things. All things. Come of thee, O oh Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Good morning, church. Good morning. I just want to say I'm glad to be here this morning. Amen. And I want to thank everyone for the prayers. Back in uh, 2020, I, was, I had heart failure. Amen. And I was in the hospital for a while, but thank God, by his mercy and grace, I'm still here. Amen. And Amen. back then in 2020, I, um, my heart rate was at, it started off at 25%, and it went up to 28%. And it stayed at 28% from then on up to now. But my pastor, I wanna thank him, and I wanna thank Sister McNeil. I wanna thank everyone for the prayers, because God had blessed me. And also, I went to the doctor a couple weeks ago. Yeah. They was telling me that I needed a pacemaker in me. But for the love of God for me, I might not have to have that because my heart rate done went up from 28% to 30%. And I want you all to keep me in your prayers. And I want to thank my church family. I just want to thank you all and I love you all. Because God just thank him, I thank him, and I thank him, and I thank him, and I thank you all.
If it had not been Israel saved, if it had not been, if it had not been, for the enemy can make life mighty iffy sometimes. Oh, yes, he can. If it had not been for the Lord on my side, on our side, oh well, oh well, would we be? Thank God we come with a promise from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who once upon a time, a long time ago promised us his disciples that I will never leave you nor forsake you but that I will be with you always even until the end of days if it had not been for the Lord with us oh well oh well would we be thank God for and he is God Thank God for blessing us, for sending us down through 42 generations. And he is God. Whatever the need, whatever the need of your moment may be, his grace his goodness, his mercy, his unconditional love, his grace, 
His unmerited favor is sufficient enough for thee. And his strength, not ours, but rather his strength, is being made perfect in all of our weaknesses every day of our lives. His grace is sufficient enough for thee. And his strength is made perfect in our weakness. His grace has perfect accuracy. Never too soon. Never too late. But perfectly tuned unto each of our very heart. His grace is sufficient enough for thee and his strength is made perfect in our weakness. Thank God for sending down unto us 2,300 years ago and he is God. Let's give this choir a round of applause. For just constantly reminding us of who we are, whose we are, and all the benefits that we have woven into our heavenly Father. An endless supply of whatever the need of your moment may be. Our needs can never supersede his supply. Never, ever did not they bless our heart through song. I think they deserve another round of applause. What an awesome God we serve. If you would, let us turn our Bibles to the book of Hebrews. What an awesome God. We serve. No matter how strong of a case of amnesia we may develop along the way, if there is but one thought that we can ma maintain and sustain, it should be remembering God. Let us never forget God. Hebrews, the 13th chapter. the fifth through the eighth verse. Even with amnesia, The presence of God, all other thoughts may be gone, vanished, but God is still there with you. Amen. Even in the midst of amnesia, I don't believe it is humanly, humanly possible to forget God. Amen. There's a whole lot of things, a whole lot of stuff. We need to go through a spirit of amnesia. 
a period of amnesia to forget about it. <laughs> Amen. There's a whole lot of things we need to forget. But there's one thing I don't believe we will ever forget. And that is our God. Amen. Hebrews, the 13th chapter, the 5th through the 8th verse. There we will find these words. Let your conversation be without covetousness. These are God's sayings. Okay. Things that we should remember. Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as ye have. For he has said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. So that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. And I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Remember them which have the rule over you. Who have spoken unto you the word of God whose faith followed, considering the end of their conversation, considering the end of their conversation, their last words, if not, should have been Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today, and forever. Let us never forget that. Regardless of what your conversation may be about. Regardless of what you may have experienced along your way. The end thought, the last thought. Should be. Jesus Christ. The same yesterday and today and forever. So let us think on this thought. Remembering our God. The way in which our God will have for us to remember him in only in the ways in which he has spoken unto us pertaining to There are certain ways in which our God will have of us to remember him in. And he has placed all of those, those ways in writing. In writing. There are certain ways in which God will have of us as people to remember him. Now God is a spirit. And John tells us that they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And in order for us to remember him, we must also remember him that same way. By way of spirit and truth. And Jesus stated that I am the way. 
the truth, and the life. And no man shall see the Father but by way. God is set in his way. And he shall not be moved. No man shall see the Father but by way of me. And when we, I, I can't even begin to express the benefits I can't begin to express how beneficial it is for us to remember God the way in which he desires of us to remember him in. I am the way, the truth, the life. And no man shall see the Father but by way of me. And when we remember God the way in which God desires of us to remember him, then our ways become pleasing unto God. And when our ways are pleasing unto God, he will make. We're talking about the benefits that are woven into the way in which we remember God. Amen. When we remember God the way that he desires of us to remember him, our ways then become pleasing unto God. And when a man's ways are pleasing unto God, God will then make even his enemy. To be at peace with him. Amen. Meaning that regardless of what the nature of your challenge. Nor of your need. God is always standing willing, ready, and able to be inserted. But God. The Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the last word. But God. But God. Can't begin to express nor explain how beneficial it is just for the people of God to remember God in the ways in which God desire of us to remember him. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday. And the most important season of all the days is today. It's all about today. And he only gives us one at a time. Our daily bread. Don't ever forget Jesus Christ, the same yesterday. Today and evermore. We come out here this morning to give thanks unto our God. 
for leading and guiding us. into the very first month into the very first week into the very first day into the very first Sunday and into the very first worship service of this new year. A work which indicate that we serve a mighty God. Nobody but God could have led us from to where we are right now. 365 days of whatever it was. And it been some of everything. Every day, come running over with stuff. Things. Trials and tribulations and setbacks and letdowns and dis but through it all. Three hundred and sixty-five days of it. A work which indicate that we serve a mighty God. And just one of the reasons, just one, which there is an unnumberable number of them, but just one of the reasons, just one, that we should never forget. Why he is a mighty God. Why he has always been a mighty God. And why he shall always be a mighty God. Just one of the reasons. Amen. Yes, what a mighty God we serve. And just one of the reasons why he is a mighty God. Why he has always been a mighty God. And why he shall always be a mighty God. Is because he changed not. It took God being that same God yesterday. Today. One of the reasons why God is, a, is, is such a God. You're such a mighty God. It's because he changed not. Which means that that same God in the beginning Today can still, like in the beginning, make something out of nothing. That same God who in the beginning can still make something out of nothing. That same God in the beginning who still lives can still speak a word and creation takes place. That same God who in the beginning went down to the graveyard of our dead and spoke away. Can still go down to the graveyard of our dead today and speak away. Go down to the graveyard of our dead faith, of our dead hope, of our dead possibilities, of our dead vision, of our dead dream and say come forth and faith will return to our faith. Hope will return to our hope. Vision will return to the visionary. Possibility will return to our impossibility. Vision dream we return back to the dreamer because he's that same God yesterday today and forevermore 
Same God who in the beginning still can. Just because he changed not. And because of such, I say unto the weary, I say unto the low in spirit, I say unto those of you who are on the verge of waving the white rag, or throwing in the towel, or surrendering the faith, I say unto you, you can make it. You can make it. Somebody in this house this morning need to know you can make it as long as Jehovah Jireh is on your side. As long as the Alpha and the Omega is on your side. As long as the Lamb of God is on your side. You can make it. Oh yes, you can. And while doing your journey toward making it, let me say this. While doing your journey toward making it, the enemy is going to do all that he can and use anything that he can to break the anointed spirit of your ministry. Oh, you can make it. And while doing your journey toward making it, the enemy is going to do all that he can and use anything that he can to break the anointed spirit of your ministry. You see, our God has blessed all of us with various ministries. He has blessed us with our eyes. You see, all of our abilities, our capabilities, and our faculties are ministries that our God has blessed us with. And the enemy is going to do all that he can and use anything that he can to break the anointed spirit of your eyes, of your ears, of your tongue, of your hands, of your feet, of your mind. So that by presenting them with opportunities not to use themselves as instruments of righteousness. Let me say that again. While doing your journey toward making it, the enemy is going to do all that he can and use anything that he can to break the anointed spirit of your eyes, of your ears, of your tongue, of your hands, of your feet, of your mind by presenting them with opportunities not to use themselves as instruments of righteousness. That is one of the reasons why. That is one of the reasons why Black Chapel. That is one of the reasons why there comes a time in our ministry when we have to learn how to minister with a wound. We have to learn how to minister with a wound. There comes a time in our ministry when we have to deny ourselves, take up his cross, and follow after him. I mean literally take up that same cross and follow after that same Jesus. There comes a time in our ministry when we have to learn how to minister with a wound, minister with a, with a spear stuck in our side, minister with nails driven in our hands and nails driven in our feet, minister, as Paul would say, with a thorn in our flesh, a messenger from Satan sent out to buffer us. There comes a time in your ministry while doing your journey toward making it you have to learn how to deny yourself take up your cross and follow after him that is one of the reasons why our faith does not teach us that we are not to suffer that we are not to sorrow and that we are not to be burdened down at times but our faith does teach us that we are not to suffer we are not to sorrow and we are not to be burdened down without hope and our hope is found in that little ray of light which is known as Jesus who constantly travels around the rims and ridges of our darkness and despair who always has within his capacity the ability to break into our situation and set us free set us free set us free now why doing our journey toward liberation why doing our journey toward liberation our inquiring minds are going to want to know our inquiring minds while doing your journey toward being liberated our inquiring minds are going to want to know does the Lord know? Does the Lord care? 
Can the Lord do something about my situation? Well, I come out here this morning to let you know, yes, the Lord knows. Yes, the Lord cares. And yes, the Lord can always do something about your situation. Because our God is well acquainted with our human nature. He made it. He created it. He designed it. And he modified it into us own, his own image, into his own likeness. And not only does our God know us physically, but he also knows us emotionally. He knows our minds. He knows our hearts. He knows our setback, letdowns, and disappointments. And most important of all, he knows our capacity. And he will not, under no circumstance, allow no more to come upon us than that in which we can bear. Than that in which we can bear. Why? Because our God is always out front of us. Our God is omnipresent. Meaning he's in all places at the same time. And since he's omnipresent, that means he's always looking off in the tomorrow land of our life. And when he's seeing an oncoming trouble, when he's seeing an oncoming danger, he manifests himself back into the today chapter of our life. Where he makes necessary preparation. He adjusts the strains of our troubles to the power of our endurance. He will not under no circumstance allow no more to come upon us than that we can bear. Just because he's omnipresent. Because where the presence of the Lord is, there is liberty. There's liberty. He's omnipresent. Meaning he never has to come and he never has to go. Because he's always there. He's before time. He's after time. He's in time. And he's always right on time. He's an untime God. Yes, he is. An untime God. Yes, he is. Regardless of how diversified our challenges may be. Regardless of how diversified our needs may be one thing all of us have in common and all of that is that all of us have set sail on a 360 day journey into the unknown into the uninstalled but let me tell you something a good captain never set his ship to sail and plays his life and his livelihood at jeopardy without first thoroughly examining his vessel to make sure that it is seaworthy and let me tell you something Jesus Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ is the inspector of our constitution. The gospel of Jesus Christ is the inspector of our constitution. And let me tell you something. The word of God points out all of our flaws and all of our defects which are found among our vessels. So let us not in this new year shut our ears to his instructions, nor close our eyes upon our flaws and defects. Instead, we are to just man our post and go as Solomon said Solomon said trust in the Lord with all of your heart lean not towards your own understanding in all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall he shall direct your path he shall direct your path obey God follow God and leave the consequences of your obedience up to God and when you follow after God's way and leave the consequences of your obedience up to God then God become responsible for the reaction of your action and when God is responsible for the reaction of your action he will always supply you with something something to hold on to that will keep you afloat when God become responsible for the reaction of your action he always supplies us with something to hold on to that will keep us afloat. When Paul was shipwrecked, he supplied Paul with a plank. When John was exiled off on the island of Patmos, he supplied John with a twig. When David went up against the fearless giant Goliath, he supplied David with a slingshot and five smooth stones. When Moses went down in Egypt, he supplied Moses with a rod. When Jesus went to Calvary, he supplied Jesus with a cross. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not towards your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him. And he shall direct your path. He will always supply you with something to hold on to that will keep you afloat. That will keep you afloat. I say unto you this afternoon. I ask of you this afternoon, Black Chuck. Do we have any floaters in the house? Do we have any floaters in the house? Do we have any floaters in the house? No beyond the shadow of any doubt that if it had not been for the Lord on your side, you would have sunk. You would have sunk. You would have been lost at sea. Sunk. I say unto all your floaters, hold on to your plate. Hold on to your twig. Hold
Hold on to your slingshot and your fast moving stone. Hold on to your rod and hold on to the cross. Don't ever let go of the cross. Victory, healing, deliverance, peace, joy, happiness, prosperity hung on the cross that kept and he refused to come down under any circumstances because that was God's way. Regardless of where God's way led him, he was willing to go all the way. God's way. And in 2023, we have to make that same commitment. We have to dedicate ourselves unto the Lord and say, Lord, I'm going all the way. Your way. I'm going to trust you and I'm going to leave the consequences of my faith in your hand. Because I know from personal experience that you have resurrection power. I know some of us have already experienced some of God's resurrection powers. He may have resurrected your finance. He may have resurrected your marriage. He may have resurrected your health. Or he may have resurrected your peace. Spoke away! And he came back from the dead. Same God. Yesterday. Today. And forevermore. And what makes our God, just one of the reasons why our God is an amazing God is because he changes not. Same God. Yesterday. Same God that in the beginning made something out of nothing. Same God that in the beginning spoke a word and creation came into place. Same God that went to the graveyard of our dead and spoke a word in saying, come forth. And life was restored back into the pronounced, believed to be dead. Dead faith. Dead hope. Dead possibilities. Dead visions. Dead dreams. Oh, yes. All of us have spent some time, and some of us are in the midst of that time now, living the life of the walking dead. When all you have to do is remember the ways of our God and know that he's that same God yesterday, and most important of all, today and forevermore. But right now, we're thinking about our focus should be on that today, God. Right now, God. That's why he said, now faith. Now faith is the substance of things that are hoped for. And the evidence of things that are not seen. God wants some now faith people. Those who are willing to take him at his word right now and step out on it. And leave the consequences to your, of your obedience up to God. And see, won't he work it out? See, won't he supply you with a plank? See, won't he supply you with a twig? See, won't he supply you with a slingshot? See, won't he supply you with a rod? As long as you stay your place beside your Savior on the cross. The place of victory. The place of healing. The place of deliverance. The place of salvation. The place of dreams being manifest into truth. The door of the church is open. By way of letter, Christian experience, or Kennedy for baptism. The door of the church is open. A good captain never set his ship to sail and placed his life and his livelihood in danger without first thoroughly examining his vessel to make sure that it is seaworthy and the gospel of Jesus Christ the gospel of Jesus Christ is our schoolmaster it is the tester of our constitution it points out all of our flaws and all of our defects 
that's aboard our vessel. And let us not shut our ears unto its instructions, nor close our eyes upon our flaws and our defects. But instead, surrender it all at the foot of your cross. Stay your place with God. Literally, hang on in there. And see, won't that third day come? When as he did with his son Jesus, he will also do with his son or his daughter, you by breathing life hope peace joy healing deliverance prosperity back into that which was once looked upon and thought to be and pronounced dead same God still has resurrection power on the tip of his tongue can still speak a word and say come forth no matter how dead no matter how lost no matter how impossible the come may appear to be but even the dead just per se that it is dead don't you know that Lazarus had been dead four days and all Jesus did was for the word, Lazarus come forth, which means that even if it is dead, even the dead can hear the voice of God and obey it. Even the dead, nothing is impossible unto him or her who believe. The door of the church is open by way of letter. Christian experience or Kennedy for baptism the door of the church is open if you're here this morning will you come the invitation is also extended to our viewing audience if there's someone out there sitting in on our worship service by way of the cable network and something may have been said or something may have been done throughout the activity of this worship service it's not all that important who said it nor who did it What's important is for you to react. For you to follow the instructions of it pertaining to you and your situation. The door of the church is also open unto you. If you desire to become a part of this great family here at Black's Chapel, all you have to do is inbox your name or key in the comment section. Your name, your telephone number, and the word virtual member and I will personally contact you and we will process the situation from there. The door of the church is open. The door of the church is open. The door of the church is open. By way of letter. Christian experience. Candidate for baptism. You may have sunk into the deepest depth of amnesia, but nothing can fall below the will of God. There is no such depth which lies below the will of God. And God can even speak to the dead. And the dead will hear his voice. There is no depth in amnesia that can take you beneath the will of God towards you. And when God speaks, you're going to hear his voice. And he said, when my sheep hear my voice, they come running. No matter how clogged, your mind may be with stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Trials and tribulations and setbacks and letdowns and disappointments. You listen to that quiet, still voice. Turn off all the other stations and listen to that quiet, still voice. 
which is whispering to your spirit saying, come unto me. All ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. 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 The door of the, stuff, the, door of the church is open. The door of the church is open. Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord, saints. Amen, amen, amen. To our pastor in the Black Chapel family, we have several coming for special prayer. Amen. We have two coming to recommit their lives to God. And we have little Shania Burton coming to us as a candidate for baptism. <laughs> Shania Burton. 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 Little sister. Burton. Shania. Another one of mine. All right. Shania, I'm going to ask you some questions. I want you to answer them to the best of your knowledge and understanding, okay? Do you believe in God? Yes. Do you believe that Jesus is the Son of God? Yes. Do you believe that Jesus can save you? Yes. Do you desire to be saved? Yes. Do you desire to be baptized? Yes. Brother Office, you heard the statement of Shania. What's your motion? Motion and proper second is Shania, who come by way of candidate for baptism after baptism of right hand of fellowship, that she should have all rights and privileges. There's any other member? All in favor, aye. Aye. Oppose his name. Ayes have and his motion being carried. Amen. And we have two recommitting their lives to Christ, Pastor. We're just so blessed to have our family back home with us once again. And on behalf of the Black Chapel Missionary Baptist Church family, we just open our hearts, our arms, and our spirit, our love, and whatever the need of your moment that God has blessed us with to be able to assist you with unto you. We love you and we thank God for you, and we will see you back home as if though today is the first day of all of our journey together. May God continue to bless and bless you. We thank God. Before we go off into prayer, I would just like for Brother Bingham. Where is he at? We're talking about our God still has resurrection power. As in the beginning. When he went to the graveyard of our dead. And spoke a word in saying, come forth. Amen. And he came forth. I've, I've witnessed, personally, uh -huh. a broken, bruised, and shattered Amen. body. Body, but never spirit. <laughs> body. You all know the story. This man had an accident on his motorcycle. And if you saw the wreck of it, you may have easily drift off into that hopeless state of thinking. I don't know whether it was hopeless. I don't know whether he died, but I know God. And God can even speak to the dead. And the dead will come back alive. So this is our Lazarus man right here. We, we witnessed the process in which God processed him to this moment. From the lying in his hospital bed to in his easy chair at home to coming in here with a walker, a wheelchair, then a walker, then a crutch. And now, as I say to my friend Safford, he's walking. He's walking. <laughs> Would you just like to say anything? Yes, anything. Yes, I am a living witness to that. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Like to say, from crawling to walk again, that have been me. Amen. God bless so you. I thank God for that. And Amen. I thank everyone that was there for me Amen. when I was like that. So now you see that God is amazing. 
Yes, God is. He's back walking again. Amen. Back on post, not just walking, but on post. Right, right, right. Man in the gate for the Lord. Amen. Body broke, but not a stretch on the spirit. I love Brother Bingham. I love his spirit. And ever since the first day he came into this sanctuary and walked down this aisle and gave himself back unto the Lord and unto this family, he's been faithful. And all of you who know him are witnesses to that truth. And we just love him and we thank God for him. And we're going to continue to keep him in our prayers as he continues down the road of recovery. Hang in there, Junior. God bless you. You sure can. Good evening, church. I'm standing. Thank you. I'm standing in the gap for two of my friends. One, she's a real best friend. I've been knowing her for 30 plus years, her and her husband. He passed on Christmas, and he's a retired, uh, he's a retired police officer. And I'm asking, asking, she, she really needs prayer. And I'm just standing in the gap for her, and also I have a friend, her, her name is uh, Purnell, this the Purnell. And then I have another friend who mother passed on last week, and they're the Mac MacLean. But please lift them both in prayers, and especially, especially hope, because she really needs. It. Amen. She's so dear to me, and I just need to lift her up, especially her and her family. Amen. Amen. Um, I need Denise to talk for me, but this is a bittersweet uh, situation. I have five grandkids. My two oldest grandkids are leaving the country for career and schooling, and I'm just asking for prayer and asking for prayer for everybody, Amen. and especially my daughter because she's happy for them, and I am too, but it's, it hit me today, you know, and she's been crying off and on with, you know, joy, but she's going to miss them, and I am too, because they are the two oldest ones, Amen. and the other three that we have, they're like still in, like teens, 13 or whatever, so the two oldest ones, sister and brother will be gone, so it's going to be hard on everybody. But at the same time, we are happy for them because they are determined to finish, you know, what they started. So I'm just coming to the church family for prayer. For, um, you all know my son-in-law, Chris, and my daughter, Angie. They are two oldest kids, uh, Breland and CJ. Let us unite hands. <clears throat> with bowed heads and humbled hearts. Father, once again, we are taking advantage of just one of the many benefits that comes along with saying yes that comes along with confessing with our mouths and believing in our hearts, the Lord Jesus, and that you raised him from the dead. From just believing that for God so loved the world until he gave his only begotten son, and that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. We come taking advantage of the benefit that comes along with you telling us that if we pray, have faith and believe that whatsoever we ask in our name, believe in and we shall receive it. We come petitioning the throne of grace in behalf of really others. 
These prayer warriors who came, whose heads are bowed and hearts are humble, they are coming in behalf of others. In behalf of one who lost a husband. In behalf of one who lost a mother. In behalf of another friend. In behalf of a granddaughter. And a grandson. And a daughter. And a son-in-law. Whose heart. Are in your hands. Sometimes Lord blessings places us in a bittersweet position. As when you told Abraham to leave your father's house. And go in search of a place where I will show you. It wasn't an easy act for him to perform. It wasn't an easy thing for him to leave his family behind. It wasn't an easy thing for his family to release him and his family and let them go. But Lord, your ways are ways of righteousness, of ways of truth, and ways of your will. And as long as we're walking in your will, regardless of where your ways may lead us, whether it's to a foreign land, whether to the separation of a loved one, yet and still you say you will never leave us nor forsake us and that you'll be with us always even to the end of days. Days brings about various ends. But we know where the beginning started. And the beginning starts with bowing our heads and humming our hearts and beseeching the throne of grace. And placing it all in your hands. Because Father your hands are sure hands. And we asking you to just take all of them. All of the various situations. All of the various conditions. All of the various circumstances. All of the various reasons. All of the various choices and decisions that's been made. And keep them. Keep them all. Keep them on. And we know that when you're being kept by the Lord, as Jesus said, those in whom my Father has given me, no one can pluck them out of my hand. And the hands of God covers both heavens and earth. Regardless of how distant they may be from us. Even all the way down into the grave, your hands are there. So is your unconditional love. And Father, we say thank you. We say thank you for the choices and the decisions that you made. Because Father, you have the power of life and death on the tip of your tongue. And neither can come unless you speak it out of your mouth. Meaning that it did not, it wasn't something that slipped past you. It was something that you gave the nod to. And as long as you gave the nod to it, everything is all right. So we ask for consolation. We ask for acceptance in behalf of those who have lost loved ones. And in behalf of those who are just being separated for a season from their loved ones, from their children, from their grandchildren, from their sister and their brother, we pray that you just allow your confident spirit that spirit of blessed assurance to fall down upon them and reassure them that everything is all right because all is well with their souls and all of the others who are gathered in this sanctuary and who are within the sound of my voice we pray blessings upon them all whatever the need of their moments may be your grace is sufficient and we pray the grace of God to fall down and cover all. In the mighty precious name of Jesus, we do indeed pray and give thanks in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Be it done, be it done.
nothing is lost in God. It's right where he placed it. We thank God once again for all that you've allowed to be said and done throughout the activities of worship service. We thank God for the increase to our family. We thank God for all of our visitors coming out, sharing with the Black Shepherd Church family during our first worship service of the new year. We're getting ready now to partake of the Lord's Supper. Those of you who can, please, ma'am, please, sir, remain and partake of such in remembrance of him.
Let us give thanks. Once again, our most gracious and eternal Father, we come before your presence in remembrance of your Son and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We come, Lord God, honoring his wish toward us, the people of God, to do this in remembrance of him as often as we will we pray your blessings continually to fall down upon all of us your people by way of new birth and by way of creation because father we cannot live we cannot survive we cannot be maintained nor sustained without your blessings those unmerited favor blessings your love your mercy and your grace that you just keep on raining down upon us 24-7, every day of our living life. Pray that as we prepare to partake of this Holy Communion, that we would partake of it in a spirit, in an attitude, in a mindset, which is pleasing unto you. Because, Father, we want to be welcome here at your table. Pray your blessings upon the content of this table, not knowing all the hands that may have been fallen upon it, but knowing that if you breathe upon it, 
Your breath is going to sanctify it. Your breath is going to cleanse it. As you did the dirt when you reached down from heaven into the earth and picked up a handful of it and formed it into your own image and blew your breath, life into that dirt man. And he came alive. We say thank you, Lord. In the mighty, precious name of Jesus, we prepare to partake of this in his name, in his honor. Amen, amen, amen. Let us prepare to partake of our supper. If you would, let us remove the first layer of protection. As it reveals unto us our cracker. This is the bread that represents the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which was bruised for the remission of all of our sins. Let us eat. The second layer of which reveal unto us our drink. This is the wine that represents the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which was shed it for the remission of all of our sins. Let us drink.
after Jesus' disciples had eaten of the Lord's Supper, they rose and sung a hymn and marched out to the Mount of Olives. Let us please stand for the singing of our hymn, which will be followed by a fellowship, our hymn. 